Hello everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to explain to you what arrays are. First of all, why do we need arrays? Arrays are really important when it comes to, for instance, having a map. Since you want to store that map, you want to store every different tile that you have. So what we then can do is we can create a 2D array, which is an array which contains arrays, uh, for instance integers which contains the type of tile that it is. But what we can also do, and what we're going to do for this example, is have an array of friends. We want all of our friends' names. We want to be able to just check the array and see all of the different friends that we have. So how do we declare an array? We first have the variable type, just like we do when we normally declare a variable. Now we have the name, just like we do when we normally create a variable. Then we use the square brackets with inside of that a size. And if we do this and then use m with a semicolon, then we will have an array with none of the values already specified. So it will just be random values. So what we can do is we can have the variable type then a name, then between the square brackets, the size again. So exactly the same as we had before. But now what we're going to do is we're going to use the curly braces. And then in there, we're going to specify all of the different parameters based on the variable type. So for integers, you're just going to type integers. For flows, we're going to type integers with dots and f's at the end. For doubles, we're going to do, yeah, without the f, basically. Uh, for characters, we're going to use the sync quotation marks. And for strings, we're going to use the double quotation marks. So basically that. So here for a little example. So let's create a string of friends. So we have a string, friends, which contains five friends, since we specified a size of five. Now we're going to create another one, also called friends, with a size of five. But now we're going to specify their names. So Alyssa, Jacob, Josh, and you and Brittany. But how do we access something inside of an array once we've created it? we're going to use the same square brackets again. So we type in a name, and then we use the square brackets, and then the index. Make sure, though, that your index is never bigger than the size of the array, since that will result in unexpected behavior. And one, now one thing also to note is that counting always starts at 0 in C++. So you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's basically all of the indexes that you can have for an array of 5. So it's not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like you would guess that it would be. No, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So as an example, here it just access the name of a friend, and here I simply print out the name of a friend. So let's now dive into the code and see it in action. Okay, now at our Visual Studio, we can create an array. So let's uh, create an array of strings. So you type in string. It's already specified using namespace as city. Create a name. So call it friends. And then we're going to specify a size. Let's say 5. So now I want to give it a value. So let's use the square brackets, and then in here, we're just going to give it some empty parameters, just so we know that we have exactly five of them. And then in with a semicolon. Okay, so now we can give it the value. So let's use the same that I used in the example. So we have Alyssa, Jacob, Josh, Daniel, and Brittany. Okay, now that we've specified all the names of our friends, what we can do is we can make a little for loop to print out all the different names of the friends that we have. Let's create a for loop. For int i, i stands for index, is equal to zero. i is less than five, because we have five friends in an array. A semicolon again, i plus plus, so i plus equals one. And then in here, we're gonna do c out, push in there, friends with the index of i, so with the index of index, and then we're going to also push in an end line. So now if you run this program with control of 5 so it breaks at the end, as you can see it will say Alyssa, Jacob, Josh, Daniel, and Brittany. So using the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we exit all of our different friends. Our friend at 0 is Alyssa, friend at 1 is Jacob, friend at 2 is Josh, friend at 3 is Daniel, friend at 4 is Brittany. So let's now talk about the 2D arrays that we had. What is a 2D array? Well, it's basically the same. So let's have a, uh, let's now use an integer. So int called our map. So we're going to create a map for level, for instance. And then in order to make it a 2D array, we're first going to specify the first size of the array. And then we're going to specify the second size of the array. So now that we have a 2D array, how do we initialize it? Well, there are two ways that you can do it. We can either use the square brackets of technique but how do we do that for a 2D array? Well, what we do is we use square brackets for each of the array things. So for each array inside of the array. 
So basically I've created five arrays inside of the array. So what we can do now is specify, let's make the first one 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Second one we're going to have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, let's start with 0 again. But this one already contains 5, so let's do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 again. So in here have 5, 7, 8, 9 again. Then in here, let's just have some random values. So 4, 6, 3, 8, 9. And space them out evenly. Uh, one of the easier ways to note this uh, when you're using a 2D array is to actually make it 2D. So what we can do is we can uh, simply break the line and then use tabs to space it out evenly and do this for every single part of the 2D array, so now you can actually see that it's a 2D array. So how do you print everything inside of a 2D array? Well, that's actually pretty easy to do. What we're going to need is two for loops. So we're going to need a for loop, which contains an integer called at y, so we set it equal to 0, and why do we need y first and not x? I think it was x, y, right? That's correct. That's how we know that when we're just saying x, y, but when it comes to 2D arrays, uh, if you just look at it, what you will see is that you will first have the different arrays that go like that, since uh, you go like down scopes. So the first scope is the scope of these curly braces. And as you will see, everything inside of here is noted down. The zeroth parameter, the first parameter, second parameter, third parameter, and fourth parameter. And then the second part, so the second array, is inside of these curly braces. So the zeroth parameter, first parameter, second parameter, third parameter, fourth parameter, and so forth. So we first need to access the y coordinate. So if we need y is equal to 0, y is less than 5, because we specified the, five si uh, the size 5, y plus plus. So now we're going to create another for loop for int x is equal to 0, x is less than 5, x plus plus. So now in here we're just going to do a simple c out map y x. Notice that I don't do an end line here, just because we want to do the c out end line out here, because otherwise it will end the line ever after every single number. So you would 0 and 1, 2, 3, and 4 would all be on its own line, but we want them to all be evenly spaced out. Like we want them all to be in a row because they are in a row in an array. So what we do is we do the integer and the end line on different lines. So we first do all of the integers that we have here, and then we do the end line. But one thing that can make it look nicer is also push in uh, a simple space. So if you now run the program again, as you will see, we'll now have all of our different values printed out. That's basically all that I can explain to you about arrays. So thanks for watching, and in the next episode I'm going to talk about vectors, a special type of array. So be prepared.